All teachers fall behind on grading at some point in their career, and it can be a huge source of stress. As I mentioned in my first video in this time-saving series, we've all found ourselves with stacks of papers just waiting for us, students, and maybe even parents nagging us, asking us when we're gonna grade an assignment, and maybe even a grading report deadline looming. What are we supposed to do then? In this video, which is part three of a four-part series on saving time on grading and just in teaching in general, General, I'm going to give you some ninja hacks on how to grade faster and some of them might be a little bit controversial and challenge some of your beliefs on teaching. But I assure you that these tactics will cut down the amount of time that you spend on grading, especially when you're desperate and you can finally move on and breathe a huge sigh of relief. But first, I'd love it if you'd move your finger over to that like and subscribe button so that the YouTube algorithm will share this video with other time crunched and stressed out teachers like you and me. So step one for catching up on your grading is to decide what actually needs to be graded versus what you just need to give them basic credit for. Now, this is important when we're in a time crunch because you might have a grade book full of assignments that are maybe just some check-ins or maybe just a quick homework check or something that they did with you in class or something that they did in their groups. Does everything that's in your grade book actually need your scrutinizing eye or is it something that you can just scan over and see if they put something on a page and just give them credit for trying. As I mentioned in this video, the first video in this four part series, not everything actually has to be graded. Sometimes we give students assignments that are really just for them to learn and practice with us or to practice with their group members. But because the assignment isn't actually done by them individually with their minds actually putting forth the effort, we don't know who should actually be getting the grade. So do you have to give them a grade for something that they didn't produce on their own or can you just check it off or maybe even not give them a grade at all? Maybe you have an online grading system and a lot of times you can hide an assignment so the student doesn't even see it anymore on the gradebook and oftentimes they forget about it. So maybe consider doing that rather than even taking the time to give them credit or check it off. If it's not really important and it's not really reflecting how they did on a particular skill or standard, reconsider whether or not you even need to spend time looking at that assignment. Another the reason why you might want to do this is because those little assignments can dilute the student's overall grade. So if you're not weighting your grades where maybe a certain category is worth more than others, then those little tiny assignments sort of outweighs the big assignments that actually show whether or not a student is learning. So just one of those things that maybe you did it for participation points or, or you did it to motivate students to actually do the work. But at this point, because you're behind on grading, just reconsider whether or not you actually Actually have to take a look at it. Now the next step is to cut down your grading for each assignment down to one aspect of that assignment. So this means that let's say that you have a four-part rubric, you're only going to grade one part of that rubric. Or let's say that you have math and you usually not only look for the right and wrong answers, but you look at how they got that answer. At this point, because you're in a time crunch, just check to see if they got the answers right or wrong. If you have a really long multi-page assignment, choose one to five questions out of that whole assignment that you are going to grade. Or even better, just choose one question out of the whole thing, a random question, either they got it right or they got it wrong, and that's the grade for the whole assignment. Remember, these are ninja tactics that we're trying to use to cut down on the amount of grading that we have when we're in a time crunch, when we're on a deadline and we just forgot about grading these assignments and we're behind. You just have have to suck it up, pair down your grading down to just a few things so that you can get through the assignments. I've definitely had to do this before and not because I got behind on grading because I basically just didn't feel like grading just being honest. There were times when I would look at the fact that I had these assignments waiting for me and I didn't want to do it. So I had to bust out some of these ninja tactics so that I could get through it and I wouldn't keep getting behind every time I kept giving them more assignments. So again, it might hurt you to not grade every single part of the assignment. I get it, but we're just doing it this time and hopefully moving forward, we won't have this happen again. We don't have to do this again. Now the next step, this only applies if you have an online grading system, check and see if there is a fill all option on there. This means that if there's a blank space, you can just assign them a grade. So what I've done on mine, we use Jupiter Ed for my district is I'll just put all tens if it's out of 10 points or whatever the maximum number of points is, and then I'll actually 
go through and check each assignment to see if they deserve that grade. And then I'm basically giving them the benefit of the doubt that they did the assignment fairly well. And then if I have to change the grade, then I manually go in and change it. But otherwise, I don't have to touch the grading part or the assigning the grade part because it's already filled in, if that makes sense. So we're just making it where you only have to do a few clicks as you're grading if the student didn't earn full points. And of course, on those assignments, I adjust what it takes to earn full points because again, I'm behind. I'm on a deadline. I'm just going to grade one or two things. And so if those one or two things are correct, full points, moving on, getting through that assignment as quick as possible. Another option is to have students grade each other's assignments. Now, this one could be a little bit tricky if it's been a month since they've submitted that assignment. So they might say, how come we're only grading this now? And you could be honest with them and tell them that you fell behind, or you could just do this with more recent assignments. But basically the students are going to get an answer key. Maybe you display it or something like that. And then they're gonna grade each other's work. It can be tricky if they exchange with a friend and someone who they wanna make sure that that person gets a good grade. So it's kind of up to you if you trust your students to do that. But that's also another way to get through all of this grading really quickly. The only downside of that, of course, is that you still have to input the grades into your grade book. So that does create an additional step, but it's still faster than you having to grade every single person's assignment. So while you're grading these assignments, you're still probably assigning work to your students, which could in turn make you fall even more behind. So to prevent that from happening, here's what you need to do with your current assignments moving forward until you're caught up. Number one, you are going to grade in real time during class. So what this means is you're going to walk around with, I don't know, your tablet or some kind of a clipboard or notebook, and you're just going to sign a grade as you look over student shoulders. So pick a number on there, like problem number 10 or something like that, that you're going to decide that that's going to be the grade for the whole assignment. The students don't need to know that. Don't have to tell them that. Otherwise, they might not do the whole assignment, but you're going to go and you're just going to look and see how they did and just mark down. And that is their grade for that assignment. That way you don't have to think about it later. That You can still have them submit the assignment if you want, but at least you already have the grade for it. And so that cuts back on the amount of time that you have to spend grading that assignment. Something that I've also done to slow down the number of assignments that I give students when I'm behind is I'll give them a little bit of a bigger assignment, something that has multiple parts that will take them longer to complete. That way, if they don't turn the assignment in for another week, that gives me a week of catching up so that when they they do submit it, then I'm already caught up on everything else and I can feel better about grading that particular assignment. And you might be thinking, but Kim, that's a bigger assignment. Won't it take longer? Again, I don't have to grade every single part of it. I can grade the most important part that demonstrates whether or not the student learned. So basically we are just cutting down the amount of stuff that we look at per assignment. And we're also just cutting down the amount of assignments that we actually look at. You don't need to grade every single thing that they do. You really don't. And you might think that they're not going to participate if you don't collect it and give it a grade, but that's where you have to establish a relationship with the students and you have to walk around and monitor them throughout the entire period. It's not really a time when you're trying to establish this expectation for you to sit at your desk. I hate to say it. I am a teacher who gets tired and I will sit at my desk, but I have established with my students my expectation and they know that I'm going to catch them if they don't get the assignment done because I do circulate enough to where they know that they're going to be held accountable. So while you're establishing that with your students, you do need to walk around and you do need to show up and say, hey, I noticed that you're only in number three and the rest of your group is on number 20. Let's get going. But once you know that they are going to do their work, then you can kind of relax just a little bit. So now that you know how to catch up, let's talk about how to just in general do less as a teacher, especially if you know that you're going to be gone for an extended period of time or when you're kind of going through a tough season in your life and you just don't have the mental bandwidth to put your all into teaching. That's actually part four of this series. And so you want to make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll know when that video comes out. So you want to be able to click here on this video to get that next.